never be involved. We will never be involved in such a crime. Let's put that aside. If you're new to my YouTube channel, please subscribe so that each time I upload videos, you will be notified that Gela Wapa Z Aposapoka video. Following the unstable situation that has been taking place in Zambia, we haven't yet heard from the president formally in terms of a press statement, but in this video, I am showing you Hakainda Hichileme, the opposition leader, talking about the allegations from the current government. It has been alleged that UPND is responsible for the gassing that is taking place in Zambia and everything else that is on the negative side. Watch this video and listen to the way Hakainde Hichilama articulates the situation of Zambia. And tell me what you think in the comment section below. Never be involved. We will never be involved in such a crime. Let's put that aside. But to presume that because you cannot find a solution to this crime of gassing, then it is another group, is a clear failure of leadership. So, the dialogue core, first let's understand it correctly. I heard what the PF political party surrogates said yesterday. And I can see their level of irresponsibility and anger against fellow citizens. One was even swearing that when we catch you this time, we'll fix you. Who is we? Who is it that you are targeting to catch and fix? Are you not tired of fixing wrong people and leave the crime of gassing going on? Shouldn't we direct our attention and efforts to the gassing? Who is, when we catch you, who is it you want to catch? Let's catch the gassers. Now, on one hand, you are calling for dialogue. Genesis of that is a PF through Kampiongo on the floor of the House, Parliament. The records are there. Which, as I said, was commendable. On the other side, supporters of PF, those political parties, Kampiongo himself, Lusambo, Chirupsha Tayali, Vice President Inonge Wina, are saying, we know the culprits. We will fix the culprits this time round. When we arrest them, they will never come out. So, on one hand, you are doing the right thing to ask for dialogue. On another, you are actually doing the wrong thing, threatening. Clear your mind first. What do you want to do? Go the wrong direction of accusing innocent people, and there will be no solution in that direction. Or go the direction of working together collectively as a society. That's the first point. PF must clear their minds as to what they want to do to fight this criminality of gassing and the consequences of gassing and the many people who are spending sleepless nights and those who have died. As I said already, sincere condolences to the family. Our hearts are out with you. The second issue around this call for dialogue, yet they're doing different things, is that there's an insinuation made that the UPND has agreed to dialogue, to hide behind dialogue because they're the guilt party. 
this shows the dysfunctionality of people's heads. Complete dysfunctionality. I've already spent time to explain that. And dialogue, let's separate the two. Dialogue must always be there in any civilized community. When there's war between countries, bombs are dropping, soldiers are fighting. I'm talking of countries, not Zambia. We haven't had war here. You will have a team of people from the same two countries that are fighting, sitting and talking. Because that's a civilized way of ending the war. I am not saying this gassing is a war. Don't misunderstand me. I'm amplifying the importance of dialogue. That dialogue is the tool we must use in a civilized society. So, let me localize what I'm saying. As the police are doing their job to find the gassers and do it quickly, as we are asking the community to collaborate with the police, to, to, to ensure that the, the mobs are not killing people. They are handing over the people they suspect and genuinely suspect, not based on odds cause. Please don't do it, Zambians. Don't fix odds cause. Mm -hmm. They hand them to the police. The police should not shoot the crowd indiscriminately. While that is all going on, and we must all support that, we must all cooperate, we will cooperate, we've been cooperating ourselves. The police must investigate the crimes. All of that package going on. On the other side, we must talk about, as a civilized group, how do we deal with the consequential issues associated with this? The anger in the nation based on unemployment, which may be exploding. As it is said, hungry people are angry people. Surely, should there be no talking? There has to be talking. That's why we welcomed that side. So I want to alert the colleagues, so-called political parties who had a press conference yesterday, they should come to the table. There are matters that need to be talked about. For example, just as an example, if we all issue as leaders, if we call ourselves as leaders, a common message to the nation, it's signed, it's echoed if we don't sign. Common hymn sheet, if you go in church, they call hymn number 39. For our church, we know what hymn it is. Hymn number 21, we know what hymn it is. Then we all sing it. Then there's order in the church, in the choir, isn't it? That requires someone saying we are going to sing hymn number 21. Similarly, we need to talk to each other to sing the song of do not continue committing violence. You know, sorry, crimes. You know who is committing crimes, cursing. Inform the police nicely. For that to happen, there must be a health relationship between the community and the police. Shouldn't we be talking about that? Shouldn't any leader talk about that? Shouldn't we as UPND talk about it? We should. Shouldn't PF talk about it? They should. Shouldn't the church leaders talk about it? They should. Shouldn't those four political parties who held that right talk about it? If they're members, they should talk about it. They should be part of the solution. That only comes from talking to each other. What is talking to each other? is dialogue. So that we can all send the same message to help in whatever small way. Not that we are responsible for it, but we are part of the solution. Musoko mm -hmm. and the listeners, the people of Zambia. Let me give you another example. If many people are dying because the police are discharging live ammunition in an unprofessional manner, shouldn't we be talking about how the police, we know they are professionals, but shouldn't we as a nation come together to say, how can we avoid people dying out of mobs, out of the police shootings? Is that not a justified point for discussion? It is. Hence the need for dialogue. So let me simplify it. For those who want to create confusion for nothing, the police must continue doing their work to protect citizens from gassing. More police patrols must be put on the ground. 
any other security apparatus that need to support the police must do that and they must do it professionally the mobs must not kill citizens stop it report the police again for that to happen there's need for a, the police to be trusted by the community one of the challenges we have now in the police is that there's a perception and i think rightly so that there are some political party cadres wearing police uniforms you saw what happened in northern province when a suspected gasa was killed he was wearing police uniform we must end that too because it's causing lack of confidence between the community and the police so we should end that so that in confidence and cooperation between the community and the police increases we must also all help in that the police command must help in that how is it that uniforms are finding themselves in the wrong hands we must address that issue that requires some talking on the other hand reaching out to each other as a community must continue when an, a, a, a thief enters a village, even those who don't talk to each other because they have offended each other in a village, for us who grew up in a village, have now an opportunity to sit together to say, who is this criminal stealing from our people, our cattle, stealing our maize, stealing our um, chairs in the house, in the houses? the community will sit, the leader of that village, will call, if he's a true leader, will call a meeting to say, someone is stealing things from people, property from people in the night. Who are they? Can we all work together? Dialogue at the village level. If there's dialogue at the village level to solve a problem, why shouldn't there be dialogue at a national level? So, my colleagues in the opposition political parties who support PF, yesterday said, oh, the PF should not agree to talking to UPND because that will be submitting to wrongdoers. Who is a wrongdoer? Not us. How uncivilized can people talk that language when citizens are losing lives and property? So the point I've made that there will be police work <coughs> to deal with criminality. At the same time, they will be talking on certain things that may be exacerbating, that may be encouraging this anger so that we can calm the tempers down, we can bring normals back to our country and deal with then other issues going forward. Right now, you can't even deal with electoral issues because that would be wrong. We must put those issues aside until we normalize society. To normalize society, we must sing from the same hymn sheet. We must agree that this is going wrong. There is a possible solution there. Even the technical work of the police require help. And I've said so. It is important that comes through. From internal, from other sources, in the region and internationally. Because we are a member of the international community. If you allow me at this point, I asked for Scotland Yard to help us investigate this issue. I asked for the FBI to come to help us solve this mystery of gases at such a scale. The PF have called it government terrorism. Let's assume it's terrorism. How do we root out this terrorism of gassing, through gassing? If for one, and one month now, almost two months, we have not come to the bottom of it. The Russia now is that we must seek help from Sadiq to end this. We must seek help from the African Union. We must seek help from the League of Nations globally. FBI handle these things every now and then. Scotland Yard handle these things every now and then. If we call upon them to help us, are we saying we're incapable? No. What are we saying? We are saying we need additional help. Yesterday I heard one of those political party presidents saying how can Scotland Yard come here or FBI, how are they going to Kanyama to investigate? How can someone calling themselves a leader be so simplistic? When those specialists come, they will work with the police, local police. 
they will work with the other security wings. That's how it happens. Are we the only ones who have asked for help? No. Every time there's trouble in the world, the world comes together, different experts come to the table. Examples will help in this case. Coronavirus now, it is said to have started in China. The Chinese have asked for help from everybody in many ways. One, to screen travelers. The screening is happening everywhere, isn't it? It's happening everywhere. If you travel through this airport, Lusaka airport, they will screen you for coronavirus. It means we in Zambia are cooperating with China, where the genesis of coronavirus is said to have come from. Hong Kong is cooperating, America is cooperating, everybody's cooperating. Why are we cooperating? If we do not solve the coronavirus, although it may have emanated in China, it will affect millions of citizens across the world. Are we saying China is incapable, as arguments are being made now? No. China needs our support. When there is Ebola virus in Congo, we don't leave it to the Congolese, we all cooperate. Not to return the coronavirus. I have heard that, I'm sure others have heard that, Cuba is providing some medicines that are being used to contain the coronavirus in China. Why is Cuba helping? What is the interest of Cuba? Because one death in China is too much for the world. We are all citizens of the global village. I'll give you another example. The problems of xenophobic attacks in South Africa are our problems. They affect all of us. We must help. South Africa is even reaching out to neighboring countries, Zambia, Zimbabwe, Congo, near neighbors, so to say, Sadiq, Africa. How can we solve the problem of xenophobic action? Because it can spill over to the whole region, Sadiq, to whole Africa and the world, and the, the continent will be in disarray. When the continent is in disarray, we cannot focus on economic growth. We cannot focus on job creation. We cannot focus on paying salaries on time. We will not focus on making sure that there's opportunity for our youth to get jobs. This is the relationship. How can someone now say, no, HH wants to hide. UPND wants to hide behind FBI and the Scotland Yard. How cheap can people be? when we're in a crisis. We're in a crisis. We will do everything possible. I want the nation to know, to help end this crisis. It does not mean it's an admission of guilt. We're guilty of nothing. We are all victims of this gassing, but we must work together. I hope I've illustrated this unfortunate misunderstanding. Zambians are saving in South Sudan, in Darfur, to help bring stability in Sudan. Vice President of South Africa, Didi Mabuza, his nickname is Didi. Didi Mabuza was helping in South Sudan to get a peace accord that has been signed in South Sudan between President Salva Kiir and the rich match, the opposition. So if you use that argument, you say, what is David Mabuza doing in Sudan? Is it that the Sudanese have no capacity? The Sudanese have the capacity, but additional skills, additional experiences will help to stabilize South Sudan. Does it require common, more than common sense to understand that? Does it require you to have gone to school for 20 years to understand that? It doesn't. If all you need is common sense, you should understand that Zambia is not an island. This gassing can ex extend into Congo, can extend into Botswana, can extend into South Africa. It is important that the South Africans quickly come to our aid. Sadiq must come to on board. Mm. Scotland Yard, we've called them before. Zero Option, we call them. Black Mamba, we call them. What is new? Why are we members of the Commonwealth? Scotland Yard is from Britain. And I want to appeal 
to my colleagues in PF to take this opportunity to invite skills from outside Zambia so that we can zero in on this criminality of gassing. Too many people are suffering. If you care for the people of Zambia like I do, mm. like you do, if you love this country like I do, like you do, let us do the correct things. And now, not tomorrow, to save lives. Uh, as much as you are calling for external help to, to address this particular problem Zambia is facing, the Osaka yeah. province minister today says uh, the president is on top of the things, meaning that uh, there's no need to worry from a number of Zambians. Your comment, Mr. Ishej. What is he talking about? Which minister is that? Remind me. By name. Bowman Usambo. Bowman Usambo. Really? Oman Usambo is able to issue such a statement? Is he not the one in Dolan a few days ago who was saying UPND and HH are responsible for this and they are working with CR1? As you know, CR1 has said, has never met me. I've never met him. He's made it very clear. Who was he meeting? It is the people in PF. Then they turn it around and say, now it's UPND and CR1 causing problems. The man himself said, has never met me. What more do you want HH to say? What more hatred do you want to drive against the HH and the UPND? What will satisfy you to see HH dead? I'm talking of Lusambo now. He is the most hateful person amongst the few now. He announced that in dollar. He created partially this mess we are in of finger pointing. It's him. Now he's saying they are on top. If they are on top of what is going on, we want gassing to end like yesterday so that people can sleep peacefully, so that no more life can return, business can return. The economy will shrink even more as a result of gassing. There will be, there will be more unemployment. There will be no, no business, no, no liquidity, no cash in the market because there are no transactions going on, sufficient transactions because of this gassing. If they were on top of it, why has it taken more than one month, two months? If they were on top of it, would they be pointing at a finger at innocent people? They are pointing at a finger at innocent people as a scapegoat. The crime continues. PF may not admit, they will not admit it, but we want to say to them, you need help from UPND, from NDC, from ADD, other genuine opposition parties. You need help from the church. You need help from civil society. You need help from Law Association of Zambia. You need help from the judiciary to make sure that the cases brought before them about gassing, the cases brought before them about mob in injustice, the cases which should be brought before them about the police killing people who are innocent along the way must be handled in a fair manner. Any evidence brought before the court must be examined. Why? To ensure that there is no vindictiveness in the process. There is no settling scores in the process. There is no elimination of competitors, political competitors in the process. That's the point I'm making. Everybody should help themselves. We are not even helping PF now. We are helping ourselves as members of the Zambian community to stabilize our country, to save our people from deaths, to save our people from disruption through this gassing. We must zero into who is responsible, who is this gassing people. Why are people accepting money to gas fellow citizens, to gas pupils in a classroom? How can Lusambo say they are on top of it? They are on top of it by accusing wrong people. Is that a solution? Solution doesn't lie in that. Lusambo's mind, you know Lusambo has a very simple mind. You can read him very easily. Very simple mind. But we need more complex minds, more responsible minds, more sober minds than Lusambo. That's why I asked you who said it. He said Lusambo. Should anyone believe in Lusambo? No. Didn't someone tell them that? Someone, Musokotwane, told them that they knew this plan five years ago. 
why haven't they interrogated that individual so he can tell the truth not lies not to fix political opponents but the truth and the police should be they are trained to decipher between lies false accusations and the truth the truth is what this country needs today mm -hmm. it does not need anything else other than the truth if we continue parroting falsehoods accusations to fix colleagues we will not solve this problem so essentially that's the point i'm making you uh, uh, talking of uh, uh, some uh, members of the ruling party, yeah. you, you've mentioned others have known this gassing issue for the past yes. years. Uh, so they say. We're still talking about uh, the pointing fingers to the opposition. Do, do you think this insecurity situation we're having in this country is slowly being turned into a decampaign formula for the opposition? I think so. I think that the writing is on the wall. I think that's the approach from the beginning remember you asked me the question you know the genesis of this thing we said the early beginnings were in Ichingol. if there was no gray thinking no dark thinking to make false accusations quickly by law enforcement not by their own desire but instigated by political machinations we should have quickly gotten to the bottom of this problem. If we do not start accusing fingers, pointing accusing fingers to people like Bishop, you know, Kashila, who started the prayers early, today the prayers would have been universal, acceptable, and Zambians is full of Christians, we're a Christian nation, we would have used that platform, and we should continue using that platform, mm -hmm. to rein in on each other as communities to cooperate we would have contained, I believe, this problem. But we can only contain a problem, having said that, if we understand where it's coming from. If we can investigate professionally, that's why the help of Scotland Yard, the help of SADC, the help of FBI is essential. It is not a sign of weakness. It's a sign of strength and smartness to call on other skilled people. In a company, Mr. Kotwani, you run a company, I run business. There are times where you need a technical person and the skills are not in Zambia. If you understand how to run a business, you are going to bring in that skill. That will help you, one, grow the business, two, to employ thousands of Zambians by bringing a skill you don't have locally. It will sustain a business, it will grow a business, you create more jobs. A nation works like that. Away from the business, the economy works like that. Away from the economy, crime works like that. Because we can't have all the skills in this country. We can't afford them. We may have no time to train those skills. We need to draw on the global skill base. No shame in that. Why should that become a problem? So the political angling now that is coming through is a scapegoat. It's a quick, if you write, like blame game and the crime will continue. Why should we want to eliminate? I have heard Musokotwane pronouncements from high-ranking PF members saying we will make sure that HH is not on the ballot paper in 2021. Will I be wrong? Will the people be wrong to say, aha, this is what they want to achieve? Using a crime to fix others. I have heard someone saying we will never allow HH to enter state house. Is this the scheme to keep HH from state house? HH has no love for state house. HH has love for the people of Zambia to make sure that we can create jobs for the youth who are unemployed so they can have food so they can have a future, they can have an opportunity. Then they will be engaged. Then they will not spontaneously react in anger and kill each other because they are not doing anything gainful. HH and the UPND have love for this country. And I believe those colleagues in PF, many of them have love for this country. I want to invite them that. 
all of us who love this country, let us work together. Let us not use this crime environment, which has gone on for too long, as an opportunity to fix each other. At the expense of what? At the expense of lives. At the expense of property. At the expense of police stations being burnt. I ask the community, let us not burn police stations. We need them. Let us improve the relationship between the police and the community. For that to happen, the community must give police chance. The police must not kill innocent citizens. The community itself must give it, itself a chance by not using all scores, whatever hatred they have of each other, and use this as an opportunity to fix those scores. No, that would be wrong. Let us accept help from the international community, including SADC, including African Union, UN. That's why we are members of the UN. That's why we send peacekeepers. That's why we send, I believe, it's not just peacekeepers we send as policemen or soldiers only. We even send, I believe, intelligence people to go and help assess situations in trouble torn countries. In the same way we do it, we send out people, let us receive those people to help us to stabilize our country. So we don't have this problem extending beyond our boundaries. But first, our core is to save the people of Zambia. Let's contain this. If we start using this as a, as a political score settlement, we are damaging society. We are failing to provide leadership. Let us provide leadership. We are capable mm -hmm. of things that we can do with, within ourselves, things that we can't do within ourselves, let's invite others to help us, to work with us, not to work in isolation. It's not a sign of weakness, it's a sign of strength. The best operator in the world, the most successful people in the world, hire other people to help them solve their own problems. That's why they're successful. Look at a company like Microsoft. Bill Gates, who does he employ? Bill Gates in Microsoft employs Kenyans, employs Nigerians, employs Zambians. There are Zambians who work for Microsoft. He doesn't say, no, I am an American citizen. I own the company. I'm based in Washington State. That's a state Bill Gates belongs to in America a state called Washington State. It's a smaller state in Seattle, where he lives. It's a state called Washington State. Not Washington, D.C., the capital. No, Washington State. He employs within America people from North Carolina, people from you know, South Carolina, people from Texas, people from you know, uh, Illinois, all over. is to stop these crimes. That's what is there. So let's not use this to fix political scores. There will be no winner. If you have never understood how genocide evolves, ask the Rwandese. It started like this. Discrimination. People go on radio stations, use words like cockroach, the word Rusambo uses on some of us uses derogatory ways that cows. Honestly speaking, is that what you should be doing? I'm told in Rwanda because the Tusis were cattle, are cattle people. And when genocide broke out, the Hutus, the extreme Hutus were looking for any home with cattle. Then they said, they are the Tusis, kill them. That's how they identified Tusis. And they were killed. Even killed their cattle. I can smell what people like Lusamba are trying to do. They are sowing seeds of genocide, pointing a political, a finger at political competitors like us. This article is designed for that. Kampiongo's article. He started very well. I've asked my colleagues to call Kampiongo. Today, 
to establish what is he up to. He's wearing double hoods, one hood sounding to be good, another hood sounding using political platform to fix innocent people. I am told in Rwanda the genocide pop proponents would start families who has married a Tusi woman and their Hutu. Then that Hutu must be killed together with his wife. There's no limit. It was all emanating from hatred. We cannot allow that. If you are doubting what's going on, that this could be a source of genocide, and we can't allow that to happen in our country, ask those who know how Hitler worked to exterminate innocent Jews. They called Jews names. They called them that they were separatists. They called them whatever sort of names. You can translate that to ethnic hatred going on. Driven by not a common Zambian, driven by politicians who are afraid of competition from others like us. Jews were pushed in gas chambers and exterminated. Those who committed those crimes of genocide are still being pursued even today. Even today. We cannot afford that. When you start using words, singling out colleagues, the hatred we had in Chilubi, which was being used by Nkandulu, singling out a town where I was born. He says, in our culture, in Ibiza culture, in Bemba culture, when someone dies, you don't go to Monze to go and bring a successor. Don't drive this country in a pig hole. Even you, you will not be able to survive in that pig hole. Do not teach young people hatred against each other. These are things that require dialogue, but they are connected to the hatred. Driven by political competition to stay in office. Rubbish UPND. Why UPND? UPND is the main competitor. Please understand that. So, when you see statements like that, they are targeted at the political competitor. Moved away from criminality of gassing and more deaths and police shooting people. Then you, you twist and put it to a political competitor. In Chilubi, Kandulu was saying, don't allow people from Monze to come here in Chilubi by implication. Kandulu, school must make you think better. The Nyeras, Chanda Nyeras, what were they saying? Openly talking. What were they saying? Another individual says, I've known about this thing five years ago. What does he know? Nothing. Why did he say that? Because he wants to use a political competitive environment which is difficult for them and tie it to this cursing and tie it to a political party and tie it to an individual called the HH. It will never work. God will not allow that. Let us all work together to deal with the criminality. All right. That's my message. Sure. Uh, uh, get, still getting back to, to the issue of, of, yeah. of, of pointing figures to, to the UPND. Uh, do you still feel welcome on the dialogue table, especially that we, we, we are witnessing uh, fingers pointing at you. As you are answering that, the Vice President on Friday did describe whatever is happening as a conspiracy. And uh, from, from, from the talk of things that you're saying, that, uh, that there's, there's an undertone of pointing at yeah. the UPND. Sure. You also feel that maybe the gassing as well might be a conspiracy to paint the UPND black? Conspiracy or no conspiracy, we must deal with the gassing crime. It's affecting everybody. If you are not gassed directly, a member of your community has been gassed. A relative has been gassed. If 
you have not been gassed or your relative has not been gassed, you too, you are not sleeping. Because any noise that is made outside at zero two in the morning, you see the gases are nearby. So you're not sleeping. If you're not sleeping, you are suffering too. If workers who are on night shifts, including medical workers, cannot work freely, we are all affected because all these people contribute to the economy. The economy is affected. We are all affected. We are one people. We are inseparable. Our genetic material is one. Our community fiber is intertwined. We are all affected. So there is no issue then to separate ourselves using a political divide. Politics is not supposed to divide us. Politics is supposed to bring about health competition to save the people and save them better. That's what we stand for. So I want to say here, the issue of whether we are available on the dialogue table or not, there should even be no invitation. We must all invite ourselves. Yes, there will be one coordinator or two. In this case, I believe the church mother bodies are the right ones to coordinate us. But we all must be available either directly or indirectly through our chosen representatives for, pract for practical reasons to be on the dialogue table. To deal with issues of ethnicity that have taken center stage only because of competition to save. To deal with the political violence, Musokotwani, which we, you saw in Chilobi, which you saw in Sesheke, which you saw in a few words that took place, including deaths, in some ward elections. The political violence you saw at the Law Association of Zambia organized debate on Bill 10. It was on camera. It was prime television that were there. You took the footage. I believe Intercontinental Hotel has CCT footage of those criminals who walked in there to terrorize citizens. There was blood outside there. There were policemen in there. How is it that they did not restrain those thugs? PF thugs, let, let, let's not miss, miss our words here. Political young people used to become thugs against their own community members, as you saw at Intercontinental, just a few days ago. Why should we not sit down to talk about that political violence? Why shouldn't Lars organize a debate? Why, shouldn't, why should Bill 10 be allowed to go through without citizens debating it in the manner the Law Association structured it? And then thugs in the name of political party cadres walk in there and terrorize everybody. And they're on camera, they are known, a number of them are from intercity. Then you accuse UP. No, no, Tutu no, says, no, no, they're from Mazabuka. They are from Siabonga. Everybody knew. When you reach that level of hatred, using politics, then the country needs redemption. And it needs all of us to redeem it. Even if we have issues against each other, arising from politics, arising from hatred, some of the people like Nkandulu, like Inyela, like, uh, like others, or if it's a UPND member, I want to be categoric here, if it's a UPND member who have an issue against a PF member, this is not the time to bring that issue. This is the time to reach out. When there's a funeral in the family, even those who do not talk to each other, when there's a problem in the family, there's a marriage in the family, there's a boundary field, boundary issues in the family, even those who don't talk to each other come together to solve that problem. Dialogue table is open for everybody. Politics not, must not be used to abet crimes, to accuse wrong people. In the end, more citizens die, injured out of gassing, more citizens die out of mobs, more citizens die out of police gunshots.
none of these must be allowed let us rise to the challenge i want to say to the people who support UPND <coughs> reach out to your colleagues in the communities work together in the communities create groups to communicate to the police when you sense something <coughs> that is suspicious that may be gassing related I ask the same OPF reach out to your colleagues in UPND Reach out to colleagues in other political parties. Use the church platforms, an organized church platform, which must not be a platform for party thug thugs like what happened in Anita Conento to beat people. That's one of the reasons we did not attend that prayer session. Because of the security issue, we heard that PF were mobilizing thugs to attack us right at Murungush there. In addition, the notice was sent midnight, a day before. We need to plan these things properly. We will participate together using all these platforms, community, church, professional bodies like us, police, whoever else, and indeed leaders, genuine leaders. We must all cooperate now and using politics wrongly as a scapegoat, scapegoat, I beg your pardon, will not be allowed, should not be allowed, is irresponsible. He's actually being a criminal in itself. Those who are using it, they're being criminals. And you know, in a moment like this, in a situation like this, that's when you begin to see who are leaders, who are destructive. Be it in the church, be it in politics, be it in the civil society, you begin to identify there is a leader there. There is a destroyer there. There is a criminal there hiding in the name of politics, hiding in the name of the church. Next time a church service is organized, I propose that we involve the church mother bodies. Zambia Conference of Catholic Bishops, CCZ, have proved to have been very, very useful in the past when this, the country was challenged. Let's involve them. From the beginning, from the planning, let us involve the Christian Council of Zambia, CCZ. Let us involve Evangelical Fellowship of Zambia. Let us involve other church, churches that are not part of these three mother bodies together. Organize a prayer service, not organized by Christians for an individual. And then you invite, let our, you invite other churches. It is visible. It is clear. Let us not use the platform of church to me to be mischievous. We have a crisis before us. It needs to be solved. When such an event is organized, Musokotwane, the police must be involved. The political parties that like bringing thugs to such gatherings must be involved to say, you, you like bringing thugs to such gatherings. Your thugs will not be allowed in the intercontinental where Lars is organizing a built-in debate. Your thugs will not be allowed to enter Mulungush Hall, as it were. If the political competitors like us, true competitors, are not there, you will see that there is no issue. When we are there, they will start mobilizing. They will start such an ugly scene like what we saw at Intercontinental. Why? Let us rise, us rise and provide leadership. When you, those discussions take place, Musokotwane, it is clear that various stakeholders who attend those services, involvement in organization through the church mother bodies and other churches, police being involved in making sure that there's law and order, there's peace, there is no hooliganism, as we have seen. Deaths are communicated. 
order is arranged at the venue and genuine men and women of God are preaching the message will go to the nation and we must all carry that message mm -hmm. and transmit it to our family members to our church mates who may have not attended the service or who may have not seen the service to our political parties to our NGOs to our professional bodies to any platform we must use we should use it so you are given conditions on how prayer meetings and, and dialogue meetings should, should take place in, in the wake of, of the current situation in this country what, what is your what, what's the difference it's not conditions okay. it's order you, you there must be organization mm. there must be involvement there must be law and order there must be the correct people delivering a message. If you have Christians for an individual delivering a message, others will shut their ears. So what is the right? difference between the order that you're calling for and the famous political dialogue that has been pending in this country? No, it's not a difference, Mr. Kotwani. It's complementarity. The dialogue must be there. I've already articulated that at length. The church services must take place. Mm -hmm. The professional bodies must discuss issues freely without being harassed, without being beaten. Otherwise, where is the freedom of assembly? Where is the freedom of association? Where is the freedom of conscience? Where is the freedom of, if you like, in my view, movement? Association. Freedom of worship mm -hmm. must prevail. But also, Dialogue takes place, Musokotwane, at different levels using different, you know, teams. All of them are holding in, in this case, to stabilize our nation, to end the gassing. In this case, to end the consequential crimes that are arising from this crime of gassing. We must ask citizens to help who may have ability to help. We must ask churches, we must ask political parties, we must ask everybody. We must ask international skills to be brought on board. We must not be afraid of that. What are we fearing? If we fear international skills to come on board, yet we send our skills, we send our policemen. By the way, Zambian policemen, Zambian soldiers are very respected, well respected in the UN circles. They've got medals. If those countries were afraid of receiving Zambian peacekeepers, they wouldn't have Zambians going there. We send our men and women in uniform, in civilian clothing, with pride. We must also receive others coming to help us with pride. If we don't want others to help us, then we are concealing our agenda. The agenda to fix political enemies. We are concealing our agenda. That should not be allowed to. So the dialogue we are talking about is not exclusive is not mutual exclusive you can't say no HH and you've been there guilt that's why they're asking for violence um, for dialogue in the first place the instigation came from here I've explained but we accept it because that's civilized so if you don't want Scotland here to help you don't want FBI you don't want even SADIC you don't even want UN you don't want African Union there's something you're concealing then we start saying there's something suspicious there what is that suspicious? There could be many things. What have we seen is political vindictiveness. It's to fix political competitors. That does not solve your problem. To malign UPND and HH and other opposition does not create jobs for you. Does not end cursing. Does not make the cost of living lower. It does not help you deal with a debt problem. It's too much debt, taking away all the revenues from development. It does not help you feed people, does not help you lower the price of millimeter by fixing UPND and HH. Innocent people. What helps you is to rise, to tower above those petty issues and provide leadership, and we are available for that.
you, you you've called for uh, I mean to avoid issues of uh, electoral issues because that does not really concern the bigger problem we have at the moment. But don't you think how we handle this issue might affect the election mood next year? Well, if we all are clear in our minds that casting is not a scheme which could lead to genocide, mm -hmm. God forbid, we have one country which we love so much. But there are people in this country who think that this country belongs to them only. They must be reminded, shouldn't they be reminded, they should, that this country belongs to all the 17 million plus Zambians. All the 10 provinces of Zambia have a stake in this country. All the 72, 73 ethnic groups have a claim to this country. They are shareholders. Children are shareholders. After all, they are the ones who have the future ahead of them. We work for the children to better their lives, to better their opportunities. So, for those who claim when they stand on the platform that our country must not be allowed to be hijacked by people, when they say which people, they're not even talking about gassers. They're hiding behind gassers, criminals, and they're talking about political opponents. We can see what you're trying to do. Trying to insinuate that this country belongs to you alone, at the exclusion of others. It is not possible. We must not work on the exclusions in this country. We must work on the inclusions. We must not work on marginalization. We must work on broadening opportunities for all. So the issue of electoral matters, Msokotwana, are matters that have a, a role because some of this pain comes from mishandling of elections. Mm -hmm. There's a legacy of that. As we address all these issues affecting our country, let's isolate any and everything that brings friction in our country. And we are capable of doing that. But keeping our eyes on the crime of gassing, mob deaths, related deaths, police related deaths, and bring that to an end. We must also be alive to the other issues that may compound our community problems. Poverty, arising from mismanagement of resources, arising from corruption, stealing resources. A few living well, many are suffering. Many cannot even afford food. Three meals a day, others are eating and having sweet course at every meal. These are social problems that can destroy a country, even though they, it starts as a crime of gassing, it can end up into an explosion. We should not allow that to happen in our country. Therefore, that's where leadership is called. We must all rise to the challenge. We must not say electoral issues are causing gassing. We must say there's a crime of gassing. But we must not allow an environment of anger in the community driven by other issues, which could be unemployment, which could be poverty, which could be others, to put fuel on the crime of gassing. No. The electoral issues, the Biotene issues, constitutional amendment issues, law and order, restoration, ending political violence, stopping the abuse of the Public Order Act to creep citizens from their freedoms, we must address those issues. But quickly we must deal with this crime and then have space to deal with those issues very, very quickly so that we do not allow any consequential or attendant issues to affect our ability to resolve this heinous crime of casting, which must be brought to an end. And we must seek help from anyone and everyone who can help us. As we are coming uh, to the end of, of this particular interview, beginning today, the 24th of February 2020, how are you going to, we're still getting back to accusation points, but how, what is your role going to be in ensuring that uh, no mercy order returns into this country in the midst of pointing fingers? How will the European operate now as an opposition?
opposition party. This is beyond UPND. This problem is beyond UPND. This problem, this challenge is a national challenge. When Al Shabab started operating, when Al Qaeda started operating, everybody was saying no, it was a matter. The Minister of Pointing Figures, how will the UPND operate now as an opposition party? This is beyond UPND. This problem is beyond UPND. This problem, this challenge is a national challenge. When Al Shabab started operating, when Al Qaeda started operating, everybody was saying no, it was a matter of the Middle East. First, Al Qaeda, the terrorist group. It was never a Middle East issue, but some people saw it that way. But that's why the League of Nations got involved. We must contain problems early. Al Shabaab became the version of Al Qaeda from the Middle East. In the Horn of Africa, it became Al Shabaab. Even at that stage, Musokotwane, there are some people in this country and elsewhere who are saying, this is a Horn of Africa problem. I've always said no. Instability anywhere is instability everywhere. Because people are mobile, the mobility of the people. There is no restrictions in movement. Very quickly, you heard of a version called Boko Haram, didn't you? The genesis was, right, in the Middle East. The genesis was Al Qaeda. On African soil, Al Shaba, Horn of Africa. Very quickly, West Africa, Northwest Africa, Boko Haram. What am I saying? A problem somewhere is a problem everywhere. This is no longer a UPND issue. We as UPND, we are members of the community, a nation called Zambia. We will be part of the Zambian community's attempt to solve this problem. We will be part of the Zambian community's responsibility to protect lives and property. We will be part of the team that recognizes that we must work together inside the country with PF, with other opposition parties, political body, religious body, professional bodies, other communities, even traditional bodies, some of us belong there as headmen. We must use all these platforms to normalize our country, to bring back order in our country, and hopefully we will now use this situation to address the breakdown in the rule of law overall and attend to these issues because they spill over. And we must be part of the community that says, Musokotwane, we cannot use scapegoats anymore. We cannot continue along these lines anymore of having double side, double image. We must have a single image, a genuine image, an image of integrity, and an image of playing our part in a bigger problem. We don't do that as a nation, we all think. If hegemon continues in our country, if ethnic cleansing continues in our country or is opportunistically occasioned by this gassing, no one will be exonerated. We'll be in it together. I have seen PF members, uh, there's an MP from Lunte. Mm -hmm. I was watching yesterday what Campiongo said, similar message. Instead of going out sowing seeds of collective effort, they are pointing a finger at their competitors politically. That is cheap. That will consume even them. Save yourself to save the community. Act correctly, act responsibly, be true leaders. We are equal to the task ourselves. 
where someone is suspicious of anything. Raise that issue. Let's deal with it. Don't allow it to escalate into suspicions that will lead to pointing a finger that in that house we believe they are cursors. Then the community rises and kills those people. When you find out later, you say, someone pointed a, a finger at a house that belongs to UPND members. And they are dead now. You are responsible for that crime. Someone points at a finger at a house that belongs to PF members. Those PF members die, you are responsible for those deaths. Life is a gift from God. Only God gives life. Only him should take it away. Through natural illness, not through early termination of life, by mediocre thinking, by vindictiveness, by hatred, anchored on whatever isms. This is not a time for that. So for us, leadership should rise to the challenge now. And we invite anybody who is well-meaning to work with us, who will work with you, who will work with other people. There's no limit to seeking solutions to our challenges today. Because if we don't do that, we are all doomed. We will not allow our country to go down. We should not allow our country to go down. We are able to find solutions, even with the help of others. And so be it. Well, that uh, marks the end of the interview. Thank you for having made an appearance. Thank you very much, Musuko Tuane. And I hope our conversation today settles a lot of gray areas, especially manufactured gray areas, politically driven gray areas. There is no time for that. The only time we have is to save our country, save it diligently. Whoever we are, whatever church we belong to, whatever political party we belong to, whatever organization we have at our disposal, let's make it available to be part of the solution, not to be part of the problem. problem. Well, thank you. One country is all we have, and we love it. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. So we've been discussing the country's security situation uh, over the weekend. The police did issue some statistics regarding uh, what has been happening. The more killings, of course, more than uh, 40 people have died. This is a result of the illegal spraying of chemicals where some members of the community do get any suspect they feel is behind this particular issue and met out their own justice way. So we had the UPND president, Haga in the HLM, giving the party's perspective on how Zambia should handle this particular issue. So Oxygen of Democracy is back next week. My name is Alexander. So Thanks for watching my YouTube channel. It's a girl, Lelama Times, also known as Galopa Z. If you enjoy more of my stories, stay tuned to my YouTube channel.